And now, ladies and gentlemen, your next fighter now set to make his way to the cage. He'll fight out of the red corner. This is Javi I Candy Ayala. Javi Ayala, an outstanding Bellator debut last October. One of the bigger upsets we've actually seen in Bellator history. First round knockout of former Bellator tournament finalist Thiago Santos, a one punch knockout. And I thought he showed good aggression, good composure when he was under attack. That's something I look forward to. Ayala had that. He's going to need that if he's going to compete in, a, in the heavyweight field in Bellator. A lot of these guys, very aggressive. You're going to find yourself in trouble. You got to come back. That's what he did. So he had the knockout win against the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, Thiago Santos. Tonight against Eric Prindle, who was a five time All US Army boxing champion, Ayala thinking ground game. He said, I have to get this fight to the ground within the opening 30 seconds. He has to get it to the ground, but he does not want to sell out and get disheartened if he doesn't do it quick. Doesn't do it quickly. As big as Javi Ayala is, Dan Mergliata is still bigger. Good luck, guys. You're on the other side. Dan Mergliata working as the outside referee, just letting everyone know that he's the biggest man in <laughs> MMA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. Army veteran now ready to make his way to the cage. He'll fight tonight. Out of the blue corner, this is the American soldier, Airhead Prindle. Highly decorated boxing career while in the United States Army. Into MMA and Bellator, a previous Bellator heavyweight tournament winner. And as good as Prindle is with his boxing, he recognizes that he has had to improve his ground game, and that's been a big focus of his training over the last 12 months. Very hard puncher, but he needs a lot of range to throw those punches. He's very good with the straight shot. He's got to worry about guys closing the distance, turning it into a chest-to-chest -chest kind of brawl. That he's not as good at. Prindle talked about being really tight with his striking. He knows Ayala's coming in. He figured that one out. He said, Ayala's going to loop punches, coming in for the takedown. He said, I have to be tight on the inside, catch Ayala when he's trying to take me down. Yeah, that's the problem with Ayala's statement of, I have to get him down in 30 seconds. You're going to take a risk that might open you up to a knockout punch. You can't do that. He has to set up the takedown. That could take a lot of the first round. Look, Bergliata's even bigger than Prindle. <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> he's a giant. Mercedes Terrell indicating that round one is forthcoming in this heavyweight fight. Bellator MMA, along with Windstar World Casino and Resort, in a night packed full of heavyweight action, welcome our first two inside the cage set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the red corner first, at six foot one, weighing in at 264.4 pounds. His professional record: six victories, three losses. He fights out of Porterville, California. Introducing Javi I can he Ayala. And across the cage, his opponent tonight fighting out of the blue corner at six foot four, weighing in at 264.8 pounds. His professional record: ten victories, four defeats. He fights out of Prescott, Arizona. The American soldier, Eric Prindle. And the referee in charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. A really intriguing fight for you now in the heavyweight division. Javi Ayala versus Eric Prindle. Our tale of the tape is brought to you by Dave & Buster's. Eat, drink, play, watch sports. Both guys just under the 265 heavyweight limit. Two giants in there. Ready? Ready? Good work. Come on. Here we go with round number one. Our fight clock is brought to you by Miller Lite, the official beer of Bellator. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Ayala going right in for the takedown in that opening 30 seconds, Jimmy, just as he called. He hasn't found it yet. It's exactly how Eric Prindle called, a couple wild punches and bowling his way in. Ayala in the white trunks, Prindle in the camouflage trunks. Kerry Hatley warning Ayala, watch the cup on that knee. Ayala 
Lewis staying tight. Now there's the distance, exactly what Prindle wants. Good right hand by Allen. He ate a right hand coming in from Prindle. Allen Jimmy looking for the single leg. Mamez costs a lot of energy to pull back off his feet, but he gets it. Single leg right in the side control for Javi Ayala. It's exactly where Eric Prindle did not want to be. So all the weights highlighted, you do not want a guy that size on top of you. Ayala trying to control with the right forearm and elbow. Looking for a key lock as Ayala can't find it. He's isolating the wrist now, trying to get underneath the elbow. Trying to sweep. Good transition to full mount. He tried to sweep and opened it up, and indeed, you see Ayala with the full mount, and here comes the ground and pound. You see the inexperience right now of Eric Prindle, not moving his hips, not shrimping at all. That's the way you escape from mount. Ayala now getting heavy, chest to chest on Prindle. Ayala with the wrist control again, fishing for a key lock. Tried to step over back into side control, ended up back in half guard. Still in good position to throw punches, though. You see the ground and experience right now of Eric Prindle. It's a turtle fight. He's on his back, not moving. Explosion of punches there from Ayala. Again, chest to chest. I love that you said turtle fight. It's true, a lot of heavyweights on their back just don't move their hips properly. They just seem stuck there, don't know what to do. Even in guard, I mean, I can count the number of heavyweights with an effective guard on one hand. Bigger Get shots now from Ayala, trying to turn up the volume. Like that combination as well, throwing punches and bunches, even with his ground and pound. The top control from Ayala, you can see Prindle trying to explode up to no avail. Um, if, is, if that's your only escape, it's easy to counter. If it's just, you know, look for your moment and explode, that's easy to counter. His hips are not in the proper position to use that. He didn't get to take down in the opening 30 seconds. He came in for it, but he got to take down, and this is where we've been ever since. In his round. 90 seconds remaining, round number one of this heavyweight fight. Ear slaps there from Prindle. Prindle's cut on the bridge of his nose. Eric Prindle has a four-inch reach advantage over Ayala, but right here, it's a detriment to him because Ayala can throw punches and not need a lot of space. That's led to some effective ground and pound from the top. You see how heavy Javi Ayala is staying chest to chest. Into the ribcage, Jimmy Ayala trying to pick his spots from the top. Once again, the lack of movement by Eric Prindle, not shrimping, not getting that leg under him. Ayala passes again. Slick pass into side control for Javi Ayala. Prindle just no answers thus far on the ground on his back. Ayala again looking for the key lock. Got to pull that wrist in toward the head. Harder to finish when it's extended that way. Sneaky left hand. Prindle again trying to sit up and through. Final seconds now of round number one. Javi Ayala scoring the takedown and going to work with his top control on Eric Prindle. Stop. Easy up, easy up, good job, man, good job. Our judges tonight have been assigned by the Chickasaw Nation Athletic Commission. Jimmy, obviously that round you're going to give it to Ayala. It's 10-9, right, not 10-8? 10-9, I didn't see a lot of fight-stopping moments that I look for for a 10-8. I absolutely agree with you. Dominance, but it's not close to ending a fight, which I think has to be factored in for a 10 8 to be considered. ABC says significant impact, total domination. It's a 10 8. Had the domination, but weren't devastating punches. Didn't really have Prindle hurt. 
right in for the takedown again. Now, this is disheartening if you're Eric Prindle because he said, I know he's going to come in for the takedown, but what's his answer to that strategy? He's doing basically what Eric Prindle said he was going to do, and yet Prindle does not have a counter so far. That will look good and powerful with that takedown, and back to work he goes with his top game. See Prindle trying the cage walk. That's legal. He can push off the cage. As long as he is not grasping with his toes, he's fine. See, Kerry Hatley's taking a look. Pretty close to a toe grasp there. <laughs> Yeah, getting worn for a toe grasp right now is the least of <laughs> Eric Prindle's problems. I don't know if anybody ever has the he history has a, of MMA. He has a giant on top of him. He has so far shown no answer for the top control of Ayala. Ayala just looked to his corner. Upside control in an awkward position. It's the base of the fence. What he doesn't want to do is give him a lot of space and let him push off with his legs and bump him off. Prindle still very physically powerful. Nice short punches. See the explosion of strikes by Alla. He wants to keep it grounded. Showing Kerry Hatley enough. No warnings from Hatley saying keep it working. Ayala is doing enough. Uh, he certainly is. Now trying to isolate the arm once again. Looking for the Americana, the key lock. Typically looking for the key lock in this fight is Ayala. And that slip from Prindle. Out the back door. Look coming out of the nose of Ayala. Prindle cut on the bridge of his nose in round one. And going in for the shot and getting it. Easily getting it. No sprawl from Prindle. No counter to the takedown. Ayala needs to bring that arm around the hip just like that. Prindle trying to power up and he just simply couldn't do it, Jimmy. It's the halfway line of this fight. Now 225 remaining in round two. Ayala from the open half guard of Prindle again steps right over, making it look simple and into side control. He's been very light on his feet doing that, stepping out of the open half guard of Prindle right to side control. Well, also, Prindle hasn't been using a tight half guard, hasn't been using a technical half guard. Easy to step over it. Full mount now achieved by Ayala. Short left hands from Javi Ayala. A lot of frustration for Eric Prindle. And a lot of pain. Ayala has been very busy, hasn't taken a lot of breaks, mixing up the strikes with his ground transitions. And you can see him looking for that key lock. Ayala trying to isolate wrist control. Take a very strong man to key lock Eric Prindle. You see he's not spending a lot of time fishing for submissions. Well, trying to sweep, and there is Ayala matching him and again side control, Jimmy. What's, uh, what's, uh... Hatley just warned Ayala. Watch going right to the eyes. Looking at his corner, that's what you can do when you're in control. You see Ayala trapping the wrist, now throwing the left hand. Prindle hasn't taken a big shot, but there's been a heavy volume of short, small shots in this fight. And they're adding up. They are, but it's really, you know, Eric Prindle's inability to escape this position. He cannot stay mounted, side mounted. Ayala just moving back and forth easily. 30 seconds now remaining round number two. Javi Ayala versus Eric Prindle. To this point, the fight by and large, has gone the way of the man on top, Javi Ayala. Prindle not able to stand his feet and find his range, let go with his big punches. And I'm telling you, he will not have a lot of gas left for this third round. He's been on his back, defensive the whole time. That's the end of round two. A lot of damage on the face of Eric Prindle. In his corner, you may have heard it. Josh Burns just said, you've got to let your hands go. Don't wait on him. Now, Kerry Hatley calling in the cage side physician to look at the face of Eric Prindle. And they're taking a look at that right eye. He did a good job.
job on it. So. <laughs> all, right, all right, here we go, bud. Right back over here. It's swollen, but doesn't look like fight stopping damage so far. Each side physician is satisfied. All right, here we go. We have round, round three in this heavyweight round. fight. Go, go, go. Jimmy, how do you ever scored this far? Easy. Both rounds 10 9 for Ayala. Hasn't landed the big shots that would make it 10 8, but having his way with Eric Prindle. Prindle trying to turn the tide as Ayala came in. Ayala back to his feet. Other than close, Prindle keeping a distance. This right here is where he wants to fight at this range. Just hasn't had a lot of time at this range. Ayala the single leg shot. There's the sprawl from Prindle. He just dove for that, didn't set it up with hands. You see Prindle not having the energy to go off, to, to go after him after he stopped that takedown. That's huge. Prindle's right eye swollen badly and a mouse under his left eye. Problem is Prindle's in a position where Ayala can just go into cruise control, and he does it. Goes forward for a takedown. Single leg. Here we are again. Eric Prindle has spent a lot of this fight on this position. What's the odds? What's the odds? On his hip, on his back, Jimmy. It's exactly where you don't want to be. He's down two rounds to none. And he's on the bottom. Ayala's been very busy from this position. Has to kill another three minutes and 30 seconds. Ninety seconds gone. Third and final round. And I is a mess. The wearing the damage of the top game ground and pound of Javi Ayala. Ayala wouldn't have to do a lot to get a stoppage here. At this point, with a fight like this, Ref is looking for a reason. Kerry Hatley very close, just out of your picture. There's Hatley, you can see his shoe. Stop, stop, stop. Time called by Kerry Hatley. Right there. It's because of that swollen right eye of Eric Prindle. I don't know, we have to review. I think he said he poked me. He poked it Poked it is what he said. That eye is destroyed either way, but let's see if we can get a shot of that. He claims he was poked. That's it, there's the stoppage. Kerry Hatley on the advice of the cage side physician, and that is a TKO win for Javi Ayala. Guessed the wrong number, or didn't say anything at all. The doctor held up three fingers, yep. and, and I did not hear a three. He didn't answer. Yep. Jimmy, now with the end sequence, I'm unclear if Hatley stopped it in that position because of the damage to the eye, or if he stopped it because of an eye poke. From what I understand, you wouldn't stop it right there to check the eye. I mean, you could, but you generally just stop the fight. I think he was concerned because uh, Eric Prindle said he poked me. He was very clear about that. He poked me, but I did not see one myself. Because he was saying I poked the eye and I did it, but I didn't want them to stop the fight for that. For like a million Direct TV brings you a replay. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Earlier on in the fight, full mount. Ayala unloading with shots, very busy with his ground and pound. A lot of those shots right on the eye. There's a positioning war. That's what Eric Prindle lost. Ayala on top. Eric Prindle not having the technical tools to get out of that position. But Ayala, to his credit, no threat of a stand-up, no warnings about inactivity, transition well through tight combinations, and that eye, a complete wreck at the end of that fight. 
Didn't see good stoppage. Ref held it, I'm sorry, Doctor held up three hands, didn't get a response. I'm sorry, three fingers, didn't get a response. To get DirecTV, call 1-800-DIRECTV. Here's Michael Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Upon closer examination of the eye, the cage side physician waves off this contest official time. Two minutes, five seconds into round number three. The winner by TKO Javi. I can he Ayala. So how about that for Javi Ayala? Makes his Bellator debut last year, takes out Thiago Santos, now takes out Eric Prindle by way of third round TKO.